How's it going lads? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're discussing the FIFA 21 closed beta and my experience with it. For cheap, fast and reliable FIFA 20 Ultimate Team coins, check out u7buy.com and use code HABER to get yourself 5% off all of your orders. So for the last week, I have had the FIFA 21 Ultimate Team and kickoff closed beta access on Xbox. Uh, I've been able to play it for the last week, uh, test it out and essentially test out FIFA 21 Ultimate Team, although there are a lot of changes subject to happen before the full release of the game that we don't get on the beta. It's more so just to test the new features, to test the menus, to test the servers and things like that, and to just gauge a reaction, a response. Uh, EA do provide a feedback form for people that have access to the beta, so I will be filling that, that feedback form in and letting them know what I think, um, amongst a few other cool little things you can do on the on, on the forums. Uh, but I thought I would share my thoughts and my experiences with you guys, so you guys kind of get a good idea. Sadly, I cannot show you guys anything from the beta. I can't show you clips, I can't show you screenshots or anything like that, but what I can show you, thankfully, is uh, screenshots EA have put on their pitch notes as well as screenshots people have remade and things like that. So you'll be able to see what I'm talking about without seeing what I'm talking about, if that makes sense. And I'll try and keep you guys sort of informed on anything and everything that I can. The first thing we'll talk about is packs and the pack animation and whatnot. I can't show you a video of the pack animation because there simply isn't one that I, I can show you that isn't from the beta. This is a remade screenshot of what the boards currently look like, which I'm not the biggest fan of. They're a little bit plain, a little bit bland. Uh, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Then again, last year I wasn't the biggest fan of the pack animation and they tweaked it a little bit and I grew really like it grew on me a lot so perhaps this year the same thing will happen the actual intro to the pack is very similar it, it's a ton of once again there is a pack tell and i'll make a video on that closer to the date of fever 21 when we get more footage and things like that that i can actually show you uh so there is a pack tell for walkouts for boards i'm not so sure um but for for the actual pack when you get into the boards that's literally what it looks like now as you enter the um the tunnel it's pretty similar. The last year has just been reskinned. Uh, you'll probably be able to find videos on Twitter to search FIFA 21 pack animation. You'll probably be able to find a clip of it somewhere, uh, but obviously for reasons that you guys know, I can't show you it. Now, with packs, uh, obviously uh, squad fitnesses have been taken out and fitness items in general have been taken out of packs. Uh, and now that leaves uh, a gap of things to fill packs. And what EA have started filling with those packs is a lot of stadium related things. Obviously, we know that there's a lot of stadium customization in FIFA 21. Uh, packs have been filled with a lot of stadium related items like uh, stay. You, you will go into that in just a second. I'll talk all about stadiums in a second. Um, but yeah, you filled that uh, the spot, sadly, not with players, but with stadium items. Uh, everything else is pretty similar. Um, it's, you know, a flick up and down to, uh, situation once again. Um, pretty much almost everything is basically the same. And as for the animation itself, I actually like the the uh, tunnel animation better than this year's. I just don't like the boards as much. It might grow on me though. We, we never know. Let me know down below what you think of the boards for this. Um, this is a remake from Foot Central. Um, so he's kind of, uh, oh, that's where I found it from on Twitter. So he's kind of like tweet out and showing everyone what it looks like. Uh, I think there's a bunch of different creators, uh, a bunch of different Photoshop artists and stuff like that that have remade it. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the basic grasp of it. So let me know what you think down below. That brings us on to our next topic, which is actually uh, stadiums themselves. And obviously we have a load of customization options for stadiums this year. It's actually really simple and a little bit underwhelming, I won't lie. But if it's something that you're interested in, like customizing your stadium and things like that, it's actually pretty cool uh so uh, effectively the way it works is on the menus you flick up to your stadium from any part of the menus and you'll get taken straight to the stadium uh, as you see here uh basically you flick up this is what ea put on the pitch notes and as you see you get taken straight to your stadium if you're just flicking up with the left stick you'll be met with this uh this sort of screen and it will show you four different um tabs you'll have the structure tab the sideline tab the crowds tab and the match day tab now how it works is uh, the match day tab is things like your, your kits, your celebration, uh, and, and basically what you're taking into your match day. So everything related to that, um, I think it includes like, uh, it doesn't include TIFO, but it includes, uh, your customization things, your customization options. Uh, the crowds is crowd noise. Um, so you can have different chants. For example, you can have, I think LA, 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 you'll never walk alone. Uh, 
GGMU, things like that. You, you can have like uh, popular crowd chants in FIFA 21, which is kind of cool uh, if you play with the sound on, not that I do, um, but you can have it basically have whatever chant you want. And I think that's a, a decent feature. You know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that feature from EA. Uh, the sidelines is where you change your trophy. So you can have trophies on display at any time. Uh, for example, you can have, uh, I think they have a golden goat trophy. Let's try, let's try and find it real quick. As you can see right here. So it has the goat statue. So now instead of just TFOs, you can have statues and things like that and different trophies. You can display a bunch of different trophies. As you see here, it gets taken to this screen and you can collect so many different trophies as you see here, probably via like objectives and SPCs and things like that. You can have the cream puff, uh, purple trophy and just all the gold trophies. Again, a lot of these will probably just be pack fillers and things like that and, and ways for EA to rinse coins on the market and stuff like that. But yeah, that's essentially how the trophies and the sideline system work. And then structure is like the main area. It's how big your stadium can be. You can progress and get a bigger stadium. You can add TFOs to uh, different areas. You can have stadium themes now as well. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. I might be able to quickly zoom in on this actually uh, if I move this photo and show you guys. Uh, there, basically, you can see um, the stadium themes above the stands, uh, below the stands. You can have so many different themes for that. It's actually pretty cool. Um, they give you a few free ones and things like that. So you can have it to your, uh, basically, whatever you want. Now, if that's something you're interested in, it's got cool customization features, big win. If it's not, it's kind of boring to you, I guess, but that's kind of just FIFA 21, like a new feature for it, really. Next up, we're going to talk about my favorite feature in this game so far and it's co-op co-op is incredible it is a revelation it's going to change this game in my opinion uh basically how co-op works is you hold r2 on the controller or rt if you're on xbox and it'll give you a whole host of different options compared to what your friends are online and you can invite your friend to a co-op session it takes you to a co-op lobby where you can uh, decide whether to use uh oh, sorry to play uh div rivals squad battles or friendlies uh, now you both earn rewards simultaneously so if you get to rank one div rivals you both get rank one div rival rewards if you get to top 100 squad battles you both get top 100 squad battles me and another youtuber you might know of called nerdfire we played a lot of co-op on the beta we got top 100 squad battles we both got the same amount of rewards we got a good rival rewards and things like that it was a lot of fun big fan of it uh, i think it's one of the best features that they've released into this game the way it works is the host is the person whose team you use so for example if i invite tom and he joins me we use my team and if tom invites me and i join him we use his team uh and it, then the host is basically in control of everything so the host, the host makes subs the hosts can change uh who's taking free kicks and things like that the host can change everything the host is basically the captain of the team he's in charge of everything and then the visitor is just the plus one uh there was no lag there was no delay there was no um it wasn't like playing on a share play it literally was like you were playing a like a 1v1 but you're on the same team it was it was uh peer to peer connection and uh really good actually i think it's fantastic uh i like what they've done uh you also complete objectives simultaneously as well so if you have an objective to score 100 goals in rivals you can both go in there and score 100 goals between you and even if uh, your friend scores a goal it counts towards your objective and vice versa so as long as your team scores it, it doesn't matter which one of you two scores it um it goes towards that objective again a really really cool feature i'm a big fan of object uh, sorry of uh of co-op mode this is the hub that you sh you get shown for the co-op lobby uh, and then it'll show obviously the captain and the teammate um and they're the options as well uh for finding games uh i don't really know how it works i think you can choose whether to play solo or against co-op players as a solo when you go into div rivals but we found games against other co-ops and against other solo players um so we kind of played against a whole host of different players really uh but it was a lot of fun okay uh we'll talk about gameplay super quickly uh this is the only thing i can find really about gameplay um this actually gives you a little bit of insight as to how how the gameplay was it is slow paced now while say before i go any further gameplay typically does not reflect the full game last year the gameplay on, on the fifa 20 beta was nothing like the full game it felt absolutely nothing like the full game and the full game was a lot faster paced and things like that uh but i mean if it means anything to you guys uh the gameplay felt incredibly sluggish incredibly slow but passing seemed really really good and it seemed like if you could read defensive play well you could tackle people but if you got hit on a counter against a fast player your defender had no chance it's not like fever 20 where you can catch up with players you like a pk can catch up to an mbappe 
nothing like that. If you're the faster player, you'll absolutely rinse the centre back. However, if you're if you're really good at manual defending and you can read certain passes, you can read certain plays, you'll do just fine. It's the people that rely on AI defending that I think will massively struggle if the game plays anything similar uh, in FIFA 21. But yeah, it, it felt quite slow. We tried out a few of the new features, like the new um, run feature. It wasn't that easy to use. Um, I think that will probably uh get another idea of it when FIFA 21 fully comes out i don't think it was working properly uh and one thing i will say is uh rb or l1 crosses seem ridiculously op so if that's the same in the full game i've just helped you out a lot um and as well uh basic skill moves are pretty cool that's one thing that'll be in the game uh upon the full release i like the fact that any player can do things like uh heel to heel or uh basic skill moves that is a, a really cool feature i'm a big fan of that uh, I like where they're going with that. It's definitely really cool. I just realized that the uh, the actual gameplay itself was really zoomed in. Not that it changed anything. You kind of got the idea of it. But yeah, so for me, gameplay was slow. Probably won't be the same on the full game. Uh, and I'm hoping that the, the gameplay is kind of similar, actually, because I want passing to be important this year. Uh, because if it is important as it seemed, players like Xavi and Perlo in that will actually be quite meta. Now, flicking down takes you to the squad menu. There's really not much to tell you about squads, apart from the only thing that's super annoying. It's the same with SBCs. I couldn't find a screenshot to basically help you out with this. Uh, so when you're in an SBC and you go to multi-add players, so you press start uh, and you want to add multiple players uh, at once, you don't have to want to keep backing in and backing out and things like that. Obviously, you would you would press the, the two trigger buttons to go left and right to add multiple players. This year, it's now bumpers. Really, really annoying. It's just a silly, like, unnecessary change, EA. Unnecessary change. Definitely didn't need to happen, but now it's the bumpers because obviously R2 or RT brings up the co-op menu. So now you have to use both bumpers to swap between players. Really unnecessary, super annoying. And also what I found is that it's actually kind of harder to get to the transfer market and stuff in SBCs uh, and concept squads and stuff like that. It just seemed like a bit of a, a pain. Uh, bidding on players as well from the squad screen or the squad building challenge screen uh, now is also a little bit harder. You have to bring up the circle menu, then click on bid to, or, or, or buy now instantly. Uh, hold it down until the whole thing goes blue and then you could buy the item instantly. So it's going to be really difficult to try and get a good deal whilst you're on the SBC screen. You're going to have to go all the way to the market. Again, unnecessary changes, really, really annoying. Thing like EA are very, very notorious for unnecessary changes that, that fixing things that aren't broken. They've done it again, basically, and it's it's just frustrating, unnecessary. Objective-wise, uh, it seems like they've added a little bit more to it. So obviously, we have community objectives now, uh, which you can grind towards. It's not just um, stadium things like it shows on here, uh, or at least it was on the beta. There's some packs in there and things like that. Um, there seems to be a lot more milestone objectives, or at least there was on the beta. A lot, a lot more things that aren't just revolving around players or, or playing a certain amount of games. Uh, some more variety. Same with seasonal progress. Same with foundations. Uh, and I think they're adding a lot of co-op objectives, which is quite, quite cool to kind of, you know, drive people towards co-op. I'm a big fan of that. Um, so yeah, objectives seem like a big win. Uh, very happy with objectives. Uh, and I think that if they add towards that, it'll be very good. Uh, in terms of the actual uh, season progress uh, tiers... They only did 20 tiers on the on, on the season progress for um for the beta. Whether they do that in the full game or not, I don't know. I am all for having 20 tiers as opposed to 30 and lowering the XP amount down and quicker seasons, but I mean that's on EA, I guess. Another small change that they made, I think was pretty cool, is that if you press L3 now onto certain menus, it'll tell you different objectives. So for example, if you look there, it says daily objective is buy a player. Uh, I think that's kind of cool, just reminds you to buy things or, or just the objectives if you want to do that. Uh, but apart from that, I think the only other thing I'll mention is that with obviously the new flick up and flick down system, it's difficult to get used to. You have to use the D-pad for pretty much everything now um, and you have to go into certain aspects. Uh, for example, um, under the play screen now, it is uh, you click play and then squad battles, div rivals, foot champs, SBCs, foot draft. It is really confusing at first. It's going to take a lot of getting used to for a lot of people. And I think that the menus itself, whilst they visually look nice, are just, it's just unnecessary. I think a lot of the things they've done this year are just very unnecessary. So I think that's pretty much all I'll say about that. Overall, fairly positive experience from the beta. Um, I am optimistic for the full game. Uh, I just hope that there are a few changes made before the full game is released. And I think EA are capable of doing that. They've got at least a month now, uh, maybe a little bit longer to uh, implement certain changes. Uh, I would say that uh, if they work with a few of the things that they've got going for them, it could be one of the best FIFA's we've had. 
but it also could be just a frustrating FIFA with some of the changes they've made. So uh, thank you for watching this video. If it was useful or it helped you, please let me know down below. And if you play the beta and, and you think I missed anything out, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I can talk to you guys about Volta, uh, but I won't talk about that in a video. I'll just talk about that on Twitter and things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm overall very excited for FIFA 21. I hope you guys are too. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.